hear you. Mommy! I was waiting for you to come in. Because hmm. I could hear you. You knew I was? Mm-hmm. I'm not surprised there. Goodbye. Goodbye. Love you. Sorry. Yeah, what? his name is not Will. Oh, uh, uh, right. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I am here with my May wrap up part two. I read a total of 21 books. Almost 22, I'm almost done, Crest, but we still have one more day, so it might be in part three. Who knows? I'm going to talk about the next six books that I read this month. I talked about my first 10 in my last video. So I'll leave a card if you want to check that out. Without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> The 11th book that I read this month is Winter Girls by Lori Hulls Anderson. I gave this book a 3.5 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. She wrote Speak, which is one of my absolute favorite books. I think it's so beautiful. I didn't like it as much as I liked Speak. It was still very good. Do not get me wrong. It follows these two girls, Cassie and Leah, and they are winter girls. They are best friends. They make a pact with each other to be the skinniest girls in school, and then they end up competing against each other for who can be the skinniest. The two girls end up drifting apart, and they no longer talk, and then Cassie dies alone in a motel room after trying to call Leah 33 times and Leah never answers. So now Leah is feeling guilty because she never picked up the phone and so she decides that she's going to stay strong and continue on this quest to be the skinniest girl she can be. I thought the writing in this book was beautiful, it was so well done, and I really liked the crossouts and the numbers and how everything was so scattered, which a lot of people found distracting, but I personally loved it. I think the book really got into the mind of a person with an eating disorder, so definitely like trigger warning for this book. Like, like there's two full pages where it's literally just do not eat, do not eat, do not eat, do not eat, and that's all it says on the two pages. So definitely if you're struggling with an eating disorder or anything like that, if you're going to read this book, major, major trigger warning. The twelfth book that I read in the month of May is After by Francine Prost. I hated this book. I gave it a one out of five stars. I'm surprised I even finished it. I just don't like DNFing books. But this was the worst book in the entire world. It might even be as bad as Billy. And that is saying something on this channel because you all know how much I hate Billy. One day at school, Tom and all his classmates receive calls from their parents informing them of a school shooting that happened a couple of schools down in Pleasant Valley. Dr. Wilner, the new grief and crisis counselor, arrives the next day at school and he starts enforcing all these rules that all the students believe to be unfair. As time goes on, the rules become stricter and even more ridiculous and Tom and his classmates realize that kids are going missing. It was so bad. The concept behind it could have been so cool and it just wasn't executed well. I think that the plot was flimsy and boring. The characters were all extremely bland. They were basically the exact same people, just with different names. The book also had mild, like, racist and homophobic slurs in it, and I just, I don't see the point of that in books. Like, it is 2016. This was probably, like, published in, like, 2001 or something, but still. The book was published in 2003, so why are you throwing out racist and homophobic slurs? Like, come on, man. Come on. I just, no. And then there's one scene in this book that's a basketball scene. And so me being a basketball player, I was very excited about this and I was like, oh my god, something to finally bring this book some justice and it's gonna be so good. And then the author wrote that you can tie a basketball game. You cannot tie a basketball game if you're gonna write a book and include a sport. At least know the sport's rules. It's literally impossible to tie a basketball game. There's always a winner. There's always a winner. Come on, Francine Post. Come on. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, I hated this book, one out of five stars, would not recommend it, and that's it. The thirteenth book that I read this month is Breakout by Kevin Scott Olson. It is extremely, extremely short. It was 36 pages. I gave it a two out of five stars on Goodreads. It's a Michael Quinn story. An American soldier is captured by the Mexican police, and special agent Michael Quinn needs to break the man out of prison before the Mexican government discovers how valuable this man actually is. I read one of his other short stories following this character. It's called Blood Rose or something like that. And I enjoyed that one a lot more than this one. I thought that this was very fast-paced and thrilling and it was good for the shortness of the story. Shortness is not a word, but we're making it a word. I thought that it was good for what it was, but it didn't leave me satisfied as much as the other one, so I only gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. The next book that I read was called The Dragon's Blade, The Reborn King. 
It's by Michael R. Miller, and I'm going to have a full review up of it soon, so check out the card once it's up there and you guys can see my full thoughts. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 on Goodreads. I thought it was very, very interesting. It was my first epic fantasy, so that was really cool for me personally because I don't read epic fantasies, but if you want to hear my full thoughts, then check out my review. The 15th book that I read this month is Shut Out by Cody Keplinger. Cody Keplinger wrote The Duff. And that is like my guilty pleasure read. I love The Duff, so I was very excited when I found this book at my thrift store. And I was so disappointed when I read it. I gave it a 1 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. At Hamilton High, there has been a rivalry between the boys' soccer team and the boys' football team for as long as anybody can remember. And now people are starting to get hurt during this rivalry and the girlfriends of the players are feeling like they aren't getting enough attention that they deserve from their boyfriends. So Alyssa Daniels, who is the girlfriend of Randy, the star quarterback. He's not really a star because apparently he really sucks at football, so why are you dating him? I'm just saying, like, go for the star. <laughs> so she puts forth this plan in order to help the boys end this rivalry. And she decides that all the girlfriends are going to go on a sex strike. And basically it is following the sex strike. And I just, it was so bad. I just didn't like it. And I was so bummed out about it. I think if I was a lot younger than I am now, like maybe 15, 16, I would have enjoyed it a lot more. I couldn't connect with any of the characters. I found them all one-sided and very bland and boring. Two characters that I actually liked were Cash. Her father was so cute and funny. Lissa drove me absolutely crazy. She was so annoying and bossy and I don't understand why the people in her life let her boss them around so much. Like I would have personally been like, Lissa, shut up. You do not control me. You're not my mother. You're a 16 or 17, I don't remember how old you are, girl, so back up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The logic that she used for half of the things that she did just drove me insane because if you thought for about two seconds about the consequences of your actions, she could have avoided so much of the conflict in this book that she made herself. Like, it was just ridiculous the things that she decided to do. Like, I was just like, where, where is your brain? Did you leave it at home? Because you should probably go get it. You should... You should go get that, because that's important. That's important. Most of the book was basically just Lissa's, like, pity party for herself, so it got annoying very, very quickly. I think the plot was very predictable and very cheesy, but I do really like the underlying messages that it brought with sex and things of that nature, because if you're reading this as a young adult, like, 15, 16, I think it would be very important to learn about some of the stuff they talk about in this book. But being 20, I feel like I know this stuff by now. So it was just kind of like, hey, I don't care. And the last book that I'm going to talk about in this part of the wrap-up is Don't Get Caught by Kurt Denan. I was sent this book by the author, so thank you, Kurt, for sending it to me. I really appreciated it. I love this book. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I have a review up of it, so if you want to see my full thoughts on it, check that out. Alright guys, so that was my May wrap-up part 2. I will have part 3 up tomorrow so you guys can check the rest of the books out. Might be done crossed by then, might not, I guess we'll see. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! This is by Michael... I was gonna say Michael Tolkien. That is not his name. By Michael R... No, not Tolkien. Stop saying Tolkien.